round of applause for Dada. And uh, in, many, in many ways, you've answered all our questions with some very practical advice on how to switch on the light. And what has always amazed me about you, even the last time I met you, and I had the privilege of meeting you last year, and it's amazing how every year you grow younger <laughs> and more charming. <laughs> and it's so wonderful to be here. But I think one of the most amazing things I have, uh, you know, the first thing I realized when I spoke to you was how you are the fountainhead of knowledge and how beautifully you have brought together different thoughts from different seers, from different religions, and woven it into a very simple message, which is something that, you know, all of us will always cherish. So thank you so much for that. You will enjoy all the more if you live the life. Absolutely. It is life that is needed. Absolutely. It is easy, it is easy to speak. It is easier to listen. <laughs> but the difficult part is to live. Yes. And, live. and in that spirit, uh, Dada, we've got some questions for you, which uh, we want to ask you and um, gain from your wisdom. And also, uh, you know, I, Everybody who's met you has had a life-changing moment, so we want to also encapsulate more of that. So I'm going to start off with a very basic question, Dada. Call me not the wise. <laughs> I am not the wise. <laughs> I'm a little child. <laughs> and I should have told you uh, that if there is a question to which my answer has not been a correct one or to which you have a better answer, kindly don't hesitate in asking for a mic. Nothing will make me happier than to leave this hall having been enlightened by your wisdom, by your experience, by your knowledge. One of the problems, Dada, is that hatred is what comes forth, you know, and the message of peace and love is not as loud as the message of hatred of, of uh, you know, people trying to score over each other, etc. How, how do we balance it off, you think? Because our hearts have been covered by veils of falsehood. It is they that shape our life. Now, if only our hearts get washed, cleansed, the same person can become Absolutely. a sage, a saint. In, in one of uh, uh, the books that you wrote, you spoke about how one of the finest things we can do is to teach our children how to, how to be good individuals, how the children will heal this world. Do you think enough is being done? What is your message to every parent over here who is, you know, trying to... Uh, my message to every parent is that they should not merely try to teach their children by words, but it is life that is needed. The child sees the life of the parent. He wishes to live like the parent. The parent, there was a little boy, he came and he told me, he said, my father always tells me, speak the truth speak the truth. But on last Sunday, a man came from the bank. He knocked the door, I opened it, and he asked me, is your father in? I said, I'll go and see if he's in. I went to my father's bedroom, he was there. I told him, the man from the bank has come to meet you. He said, go and tell him that he is not in. <laughs> now, now what shall I do? On the one hand, I have to follow my father's instructions. Sure. On the other hand, I have to speak the truth. So I quietly came and told the man, my father says that I should tell you that he is not in. <laughs> that's, that's so that is the difficulty. Okay. That, that's a very, very well put uh, point, uh, Dada. But I'm going to ask you, you know, uh, for a lot of Indians, and I, I think for a lot of us, you know, the daily grind of life, you know, 
the daily uh, search for uh, making sure that there is financial security, that you have money for your children, that gets us so occupied that we don't have enough time to take a pause. Do you think uh, this generation is, uh, you know, particularly I, materialistic in, in that context? I think we are uh, living complicated lives. Mm, that is true. We are doing so many things which we don't really need to do. All we are asked to do is to do our duty. Let us do our duty. We will have plenty of time to give to our family and to give to other things which will make us happy. We are multiplying our work. Absolutely, and we are also yeah. being driven by ambition yeah. and aspiration. Yeah. And uh, yeah. a lot of our ambition yeah. is about material yeah. wealth and material yeah. position. And we are wanting things that we don't really need. My neighbor has got this, I must have it. You don't need it. If you need it, you will get it. No, I must have it because my neighbor has it. That, that's, that's a sad reality, Dada. I want to ask you a little personal question. You know, what is amazing about you is that you also trained in science. You're a scientist. You know, you you trained um, uh, in a the science. Bit science. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> okay. That science is, is superstition. So how no. <laughs> how do you how do you balance science and spirituality? How does a man of science? make sense of spirituality because, because they are seen as two sides of a coin that don't mean because so, spirituality too is a science if you come to think of it actually it was called atma vidya mm. and vidya means a science that was the science of the spirit and the sciences that we have now they are sciences of matter so both are sciences both have laws, but we have made a distinction because the ordinary science studies the universe that is outside of us. There is a huge universe within us. The study of that within inner universe is spirituality. When did the light come on for you in your own personal journey? Last time I was here, I saw this wonderful documentary about your journey and it was fascinating to see how very early on in life you realized that you, know, you found your path. Many people don't find their path. So for a lot of people over here, give us, an, give us the moment when the light came on for you within yourself. I want the light. I have come here to get the light from these people. <laughs> we don't believe you at all. I mean, we don't think that is true because I think, uh, you know, you are the one who is emanating uh, light, uh, the light of spirituality. I, I, but I, was there a moment when... I, when I will ask every one of you to pray for me so that the light may be given. <laughs> <laughs> given to me. No, but is there a moment? What was the moment with, with the, the closest connection the, to God? The, God? The, the closest connection to God is leave everything to God. Leave everything to God. Whatever is to happen will happen. You cannot change it. The video is made. Can you change the video? Whatever is to happen, will happen. Then what is in our hands? In our hands is this one thing, our reaction to what is happening to us. I can react in a positive way, I can react in a negative way. A family of three, the father and two daughters. The father passed away. I visited them. The elder sister had taken it in a positive way. She was reading from the Bhagavad. And she said, I feel grateful to God 
that he gave us our saintly father for so many years. He could have called him away ten years earlier, but I feel grateful that he gave us for so many years. The younger daughter was in tears. She tore her hair. She uh, abused God. She did so many things. Now this is in our hand. Either to react in a negative way or in a positive way. Whatever is to happen has to happen. Whatever you may do. There are mothers I know, they are very much worried about their daughters if they grow up and they, do, they have not married. So worries will not marry your daughter. <laughs> your daughter will be married at the time that is meant for her marriage. Not earlier, not later. If only we accept whatever happens to us. And if possible, rejoice in it, we will always be happy. You know, I'm going to move to some of the questions that I've got because I think this is an amalgamation of a lot of questions that have come from the audience. And I'm going to start with one very difficult one since I'm a journalist. I can ask difficult questions sometimes. <laughs> my, my question is why? And I'm going to play the gender card, Dada. Why is it that through centuries we've had such few examples of enlightened women? Or has there been, I mean, is that a misnomer? Because I think every mother is enlightened for the child. But why do we have so few women gurus, you think? Because on this planet, there are many planets. There are many types of beings. Hmm. But on this planet, women have all those qualities which if a man has, he becomes a saint. <laughs> that answers all the questions, Dada. Thank you for that. <laughs> uh, Dada, the other question that a lot of people over here have is that in the, in the attempt to go towards the spiritual, you know, to find the light or switch on the light within, you're constantly battling yourself. And I think the biggest, you're always fighting with yourself, with the darkness within, and feelings of anger, of ambition, of lust, of jealousy keep cropping up. How do we stick to the path? The pilgrim on the path knows that the path that he has chosen. There are many obstacles, but every obstacle that he overcomes unfolds an amount of spiritual energy that is within him. So he welcomes it. I, I read of a holy man. He prayed to God. He said, God, why have you forgotten me? A whole week has passed and no trouble has come to me. <laughs> that, that's a great story. I'm going to ask you about, do you believe and, and you know that, what is your view on religion, on the multiplicity of faith? Because I've had the privilege of meeting great uh, men like you, and what I've always been amazed with is none of you talk about one religion. You talk above religion. Do we need to lift ourselves in terms of spirituality and not get lost in what kind of God that you, you pray to, but really the the message of the God. Do you think the world is going wrong there? In spirituality, there are no two kinds of God. There is only one God. True. Yeah. So this I multiplicity... I may be a Muslim, I may be a Christian, I may be a Hindu, there is only one God. And the message is the same across religions? 
naturally. If it is very true, mm. if it is really just, then there are many answers to the same question. Mm. Yes. And that is what creates trouble. So we should do less of religion and more of spirituality? You there think? should be spirituality. There should be no religion. What do you think India can do, Dada, to, to send this message across? You know, because we are very blessed to have the Gita with us, the spiritual We source. are blessed to have the Gita, but we do not have people who live the Gita. It is life that, that is needed. Uh, Gurudev used to say, religion, let us talk of it less. Practice more. Let us talk of it less. But we, we have talkers. They will give you discourses. <laughs> twelve year, twelve hours, they will keep on talking. But as you go and look into their life, you find that it is. That is true. That yeah. is true. What do you be, uh, think of? a lot of people becoming superstitious about superstition and spirituality. They don't, they don't gel. I've always been amazed at how people are superstitious about the direction of their house, the direction. What do you think about that? I mean, what is your view? Do you really... Vastu, Vastu. All of that. I mean, you know, superstition, wearing, wearing threads and all of that. You know, we all yeah, yeah, yeah. look at, uh, yeah. at, uh, at props yeah. to protect ourselves, etc. Yeah. What is your view on yeah. that? My view is that let those who believe in it, do it. But let them not come to me. Okay. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. What is the one message that you would want everybody over here to walk away with today? If there is something that will be life-changing, that will, you know... There is only one message that I would give them, the message that I give to myself. Mm. Who am I to give message to all these people? But I give the message to myself, mm. and the same I repeat, that is, turn back to God. Four-worded message. There was a time when God was a force in our life, when God was real to us. Today, God is only a word. That is why you have indiscipline, anarchy, terrorism. All these things have come because we have thrown God out of our homes and out of our educational institutions. These are the two centers of character building. Mm. There is a lot of fear about talking about God in educational institutions because religion, because the question of religion comes in. What is your... Uh, because the t teachers are religious, they have thrown spirituality out. <laughs> they have thrown God out, that's the delicate. That's a very powerful message, Dada. Yes, yes. That turn Bring to God. Bring God back. Turn back to God. Wonderful. Well, on that note, Dada, thank you so much from the bottom of our heart for this wonderful conversation.